Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. So a lot's happened since this new year started, huh? That's the first thing that came to my mind. Okay, so I woke up this morning, and here I am back on earth. Before I woke up, I was in this place. It was just, I can't describe it. I'm going to try my best. Complete peace. It was so peaceful. It was amazing. And then some people call that REM sleep. I don't know. I'd call it leaving the body. <laughs> um, and then I came back to earth, waking up, and the noise and all this stuff started getting louder and louder and louder, and then more painful and all this stuff. Yeah. And as soon as I got up, I started reasoning everything again reasoning my life, reasoning who I am. Actually, the body that I was entering back into was nothing but reasoning. And this infinite place of peace that I was in, which was amazing, started to diminish into this little, small body. Not just because I'm short, but but just this, our human, in comparison to eternity, we are smaller than a grain of sand. And it got me to think, and some words came out um, through my subconscious, and I was like, what the heck is this? And... The first thing I could think of was choice. We are here by choice in this earth. And I was like, well, I don't really know what that means. I'm going to try my best to explain what I think it means. It may not even be the truth. But we are inhabiting these bodies because we choose to. But like I said, that may not be true. Um, that's just what I was reasoning up or thinking up. And um, it, it was like in a sense of the more I reasoned, the smaller my reality became. And it started to make sense. That was perfect sense to me. I was like, what? What? The more I reason, the smaller my reality the, of, of how I conceive the world and, and God and everything and people and even including myself become. Wow. And, I, and it wasn't even in the sense that I was thinking this. It was a sense of this was actually happening. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's insane. Why would I want to reason? Because the opposition of reasoning is not needing to know, but just knowing. <clears throat> I don't know how much of that is biblically true, but I do know one thing. And I took a shower this morning, as I usually do, and, and I pray. And basically just talk to God, like, what is this? What's going on? Whether I talk to him through my mouth uh, or just by my thoughts, I talk to him. I acknowledge his presence. And I felt like he was trying to tell me something. And this is the thing that he's been telling me this whole week. But I think he was really wanting me to refine this idea or concept to tell his people I am not you. I'm not in your reality. I'm not 
in time. I'm not in space. I created those things, but I'm not of this world. I'm outside of what you can ever comprehend, what you could ever understand. I'm outside of it. I'm outside of you. My greatness and my grandness is so beyond any human comprehension. I want you to think about this for a second. God can create dirt from nothing. He creates its color. He creates its dimension. He creates its weight. He creates matter. He creates its space. He is so smart. It's beyond what we can understand. His wisdom is so vast. His power is so amazing. And that's just dirt. And then we look around, we see grass, we see um, the stars and the moon, we see the mountains, we see trees, we see animals. And he says, I know each of them by name. And I fashioned them together. I know every grain of sand on in the entire world universe in the entire existence i know every atom which is a proton electron and a neutron that make up an atom i know every one of them they all obey me the smallest particle and fabric of time is space time obeys me gravity obeys me um, matter obeys me the dimensions I've created, they obey me. Everything yields to me. Our bodies are held together by his will. I'm not just turning in to sludge or evaporating. My skull is held in place. My eyes can see because he's allowing me to see in the re my retina and the way I perceive the world, the way I think is held together. He created us in a way that we can think. He allows us to think and holds it together, even if it's, we think bad things. Even if we do bad things, he allows us, our body, to move and, and to, uh, to exist, to feel. He allow, he, he's so smart. He created feeling. I can feel the wind. I can feel pain. I can feel love or all these things. He says, they are all under my authority from the smallest thing in existence to the greatest things in existence. The, the clouds are mine, the trees, the stars, the universe, every um, you know, uh, asteroid that comes into your thing, everything completely obeys me and it's mine and I know them and they know me. I am the creator of all things living. Everything is mine. It has my name on it. Every time we take a breath, we're proclaiming God. And with that being said, if everything is his, and if I believe that, it has his name on every little small micro organism or whatever but I take a pen and I write with the very dimensions of the pen and in the ink that are woven together with his name all over creation I don't like or I don't believe or I hate God I have to use the breath that he gives me I have to use his word that he holds my mind together with. He holds my body, my organs together by his word. To blasphemy who he is everywhere. 
he's not these things, but he has, but he is of them. Meaning he, if he exists, they exist, but he can still exist even if they don't exist. He can call them into being and call them out of being and they obey him. Those who obey him, they love him. If all creation and and all this elegancy, they obey him. The rocks on the mountains obey him. The mountain obeys him. The snow obeys him. The way the Bible describes it is he opens up his, you know, magical chest or something, and he allows it to snow on the earth. That's amazing. He created it. He created everything that we see and that we don't see. So to blasphemy God is to not acknowledge creation, which means that you can't exist. But the fact that we exist, we are subconsciously acknowledging that he exists, even if we are suppressing that subconscious truth and saying God doesn't exist. He exists in us because we have our being. And we move through him in every fabric of time and space and reality and dimension. We can't hide from him because we are part of creation. And wherever creation is, there's life. And God says, I am a part of everything. He can make us blind or he can make us see. Everything happens because of him. There's not one thing that happens because of him except human free will. He says, I I can control everything, but one thing I won't control is you and me. We have free will. Otherwise, we would be robots. And he says, those who love me surrender their free will, like Jesus, to to me, and I guide their every step, their every thought. I direct them to how I want them to live because he created everything that we see. I mean, he created a tree. He knows how he designed it first into a seed, and he knows what it's to become. He's the author, but and he's the finisher. When he created human beings, he is the author of human beings. But he gives us a choice whether we're going, whether he's going to allow us to hand our life over to him and let him be the finisher of our story. And a lot of us, Christian or non-Christian or believer or non-believer, whoever you are, we're not surrendering to God. We're saying, I have a better plan than you, God. I am smarter than you, God. I can create dirt if I put my mind to it or believe hard enough. And God laughs in heaven. We can fix this world through our political or our knowledge of this world. If I read enough books, if I go to school enough, if I, um, whatever you think you need to do or think you can do, if I make enough friends, if I get famous enough, can you create reality? Can you call things into existence and call them out of existence like that? Can you control your emotions? God wants to show us in comparison to him that there is no one like him. He also wants to show us how small we are and how infinitely vast he is. Infinity. We can't even conceive it. And I asked him, I was like, so what do you want me to know in this? What are you trying to say, Lord? And he says, 
I want to teach you about pride. Pride is a representation of control. And, peop- and it looks different based off of everyone's sin. It's disguised in different things. And, and then he started to really enlighten me, really show me what he meant. Did you know that pride is self-pity or self-pity is pride? Throwing a temper tantrum, making it all about yourself, whether it's self-pity, pride. Did you know beauty is pride? If you worship the way you look, it's pride. Did you know money is pride? You have all that you think you're better than other people. It's pride. You worship that. Did you know knowledge is pride? You think you're the smartest person ever in the world, that you're better than everyone or you're smarter than God? It's pride in comparison to who actually created knowledge, created um, beauty created these things. We're saying we're the great, and we're the most beautiful, the most smart, the most powerful. People want power. When the woman partook of the fruit, she said in her subconscious, I want to be God. I want power. I want to be in control. The fruit of knowledge of good and evil represents control. And a lot of us, we are so pitiful that we try to control even the smallest thing. If I pick this up, this is a little stick. If, if I picked up a stick or a dirt, whatever I picked up, doesn't matter. We are so lost. We are so prideful that We'll be wrong about everything around us. Our whole life will fall apart right before our very live existence. Before our eyes will fall apart. We try to control this. We try to control this. We try to control this, this, and this. And and, and every time life shows us that we cannot control it. So then we'll just, we'll, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pick up this and I can control this. I can control this because it's in my hand and it's, it's mine. Mine. Mine, 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 mine. Now, let me remind you, everything has God's name written on it because he's the creator of everything. And he can take it out of existence just like that. People die every day. Nope, you don't exist no more because I'm God. And you're not. Life is so fleeting. Every day the sun comes up and it sets. Every day we put on new clothes and then we take them off when we go to sleep. We have refreshed with new energy every day and then we're drained by the end of the day. Even in man's creation, we fill up our gas tanks every day. We pay our rent every day and then they're done or And we have to pay them again. God is trying to show how futile our plans to control anything, anything at all, even ourselves. We can't even control our own thinking. So what I'm getting at is this. We are choosing to rebel. Being gay is rebellion against God. Being smart, trying to trying to become the smartest person in the world, trying to get your degree or whatever your thing is, it's completely, we are rebelling against God. And with that, we should not be surprised by the way our life looks. Because this is a choice. We shouldn't even complain. None of us should complain in this world because we are choosing to live this way. I don't care who you are, 
what you're going through. God is saying this, you're choosing that. Your life sucks because you choose this is your choice. This is your utopia. But if you want real life, you have to surrender your life. You have to come to Jesus. You have to surrender everything. There's Christians who even are still trying to control God. If I read the Bible enough, if I learn enough theology, go to church enough, and, I, and he tells you, I am not of your works. He's saying, can you create the Pleiades, the galaxies? Can you create Jupiter? You can't even do that. You can't even create dirt. But you come to my throne. You come to me and you try to offer up your works. Like, look, God, I tithe today. And God's like, what am I supposed to do with that? Look, God, I know more about you. What am I supposed to do with that? What he wants us to do is he wants us to be in complete submission to everything that he does and wants to do in our lives. He wants us to wake up every day and say, I surrender. I surrender every moment of my life. I surrender every thought that I think. My hands, my feet, my mouth, they are yours. Do with me whatever you will have me do. Jesus said, I did not come to do my will. I came to do the will of him who sent me. It's impossible to try to be perfect and live according to the word of God by ourself without him. The fruit of the spirit is the fruit of eternity. The fruit of love, peace, patience, kindness. It does not envy, it does not boast. And if it boasts, it boasts in who? The Lord who created all things. We can take no credit for anything. Look at, I'm so smart. Okay. To whom? Whom you're comparing yourself to your education? Yourself? Well, yeah. If you're comparing yourself to yourself, then yeah, you're pretty smart. You compare yourself to uh, anyone else. You're striving to be better than those people. Sure. But who are you comparing yourself to? If you compare yourself to God, then you get on your face because you're not as smart as God. Your wisdom, compare yourself to anybody else. Yeah, you may be smarter than them. Compare yourself to God, get on your face because you're not, your wisdom is not as smart as God. You compare yourself to beauty, whatever you, whatever you think that you're good at. Compared to God, oh, I'm great at painting. I'm great. I mean, look at the freaking sky for crying out loud. Look at this amazing, wow, we can't do that. Get on your face. But he says, people worship these things. They worship what they know. They worship their pity. They worship things that aren't even true. And he says, stop paying it. Stop living for this world. It's temporary. Your glory here on earth is temporary. People die every day. They live their whole life gathering these possessions, gathering their knowledge, gathering their wisdom and their businesses. They live their whole life for themselves, glorifying themselves or living in self-pity for themselves whatever their pride is, and then they die just like everybody else. And they die when they least expect it. And then they make the creator. They wasted this life chasing after the wind, a myth, 
when right before their eyes, every day, God is showing us we are not God. And we're throwing our eternity away by our temporary reality because we think we're in control. And we even believe it. He's trying to show us every day how foolish we are in comparison to the one who created the dirt, the one who created the stars and the moon and the trees and the animals. He knows each and every animal by name. He knows everyone who's ever existed and will exist. He knows every follicle and hair and atom inside of their being. He created it. He is the God of beauty. He is the God of wisdom. He is the God of all authority and all power. He is the God of relationship. He is the God of all gods. No God can, can understand him because there are no gods but one God. And he is the grand master of everything. And he showed himself in the name and form of a man named Jesus. Jesus is the best way that we can comprehend what he's like. He's walking on water. We can't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. And some of us are trying to reason that. We still try to reason our life and reason the things around us and why this is happening. Some of us are even Christians and reasoning, why would God do that? It's not for you to know. It's for you to simply trust him. He said, I do whatever you want me to do. God says, go do a cartwheel right now in the middle of the freeway. Woo, he won't do that because he's not that kind of God. But if he did call us to do that, why would you want me to do that, Lord? That's not, that's not what you want me to do. Surely you don't want me to do that. No, uh, maybe you want me to do this. And he's like, I'm still waiting for that cartwheel. In the middle of the highway, if that's what God wants you to do, you do it. Cartwheel? Yeah, go. Boom. Done. What else do you need, Lord? What do you want me to do? That's what he wants. Those are the people who go into heaven because they're showing one thing. They don't need to know. They just trust him. And that's where God wants you in that relationship. And until you obey, if you feel doubt, if you feel fear and you don't have peace, and you're not at rest, you don't worship the God that we worship. You worship this world or yourself. And this world says, worship yourself. How did I get this knowledge? I just prayed. I said, God, help me be, be a better speaker. Boom, I woke up. Oh, here I am. Wow. Just like he anointed the donkey. He could do anything. Nothing isn't too impossible for him. And he does it for free. We toil and work all day for, for clothing and for shelter and for food. And he gives it for free. I see people buying stuff that I get for free. And I'm like, wow. Oh, what do you know? This thing broke. Or what do you know? This happened. And suddenly, you know, the food distribution place that we go to suddenly has a lot of it. And it's like, oh my gosh. And it was exactly what I was craving or desiring, but I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to waste the money on that. And God's like, you want it? Gotcha. I can control time, space, and matter. I can control the reality and dimensions. No matter what human beings try to do, it's foolishness to me. And I laugh because I tort their plans every day. Look at our political systems. That's God's work. He's like, look at this. And another thing is that he wants me to say to you, he hears your prayers. And he hears the things that you don't pray. He's like, if they would only pray to me what they really need or what they really want or what they're really suffering with, I'd answer them. He hears everything, whether you pray or not. Question is, why don't you actually believe that he'll answer you? Why don't you have the faith just to just kind of just, God, like, he's like, 
waiting for us to pray to him, waiting like, come on, pray, pray to me. I'm ready. I'm going to answer it. Do you believe? Do you believe I'll answer it? Because if you believe, you'll pray. But if you don't, you won't pray. And he loves it. He's like, we think that God doesn't have enough time. I mean, come on. He's holding the entire universe by his, the will of his word. He's holding time and the fabric of space and this dirt and my body together by the will of his word. We can't do that. We can't understand that. And because we can't understand that, we think that, that that God is that small. Because we don't have the strength. We don't have the wisdom. We don't have the knowledge or power or authority to do that. So we think, well, if, if I can't do it, then God can't do it. And God's like, I am not you. The Bible says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Anything. Anything. So let's say the entire world is Christians magically and everybody prays simultaneously asking God for whatever. Let me, let me say this first. He's not gonna answer something that's not biblical or something that's not good for us because he's a righteous, good, loving God as a father should be. But he will answer every prayer. He can. And he's waiting to weave it all together because he can do that. He loves to do that. He's like, oh, this, all these people prayed to me at the same time and they're curious how I'm gonna get it done. Watch this, boom, because I'm a creator. I love to create, but I need an idea. I know what I, my ideas are, but I want someone to bring me their ideas. I want my children to pray to me so I can answer them I love answering my kids' prayers. And those who don't pray, they don't believe. And sometimes they pray just to flatter themselves, make them feel a little good about themselves. Oh, look at me, I prayed. <laughs> Makes me feel like a better person. Oh, well, just guess what? Checking Facebook notifications makes me feel like a more important person too. It makes me feel a little good. Doing little deeds for God. Look at God. Look at this. Look at my little deed. And God's like, that only glorifies you. Do you actually believe that I exist? Do you actually believe that I am not you? I don't think like you. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth. I mean, we can't even conceive how far the universe goes. So are my thoughts higher than your thoughts and my ways higher than your ways. How do we get to this place where we can lean on something that is greater than ourselves, that is outside of ourselves, that we can get to real unconditional faith in Jesus, in God? I'll tell you what, it starts in the Bible reading the Bible, it starts there. The more you read it, the more you believe it. We've been soaking ourselves in this world with its knowledge and its information and what people tell us and how we've been raised so much that we believe it. But God is calling us and saying, why don't you soak in the word of God? Soak it in, soak it in, soak it in, soak it in. And then you'll start to believe it. And if you believe it, you'll start to apply it. Because God tells us exactly what we should be doing. But do we do it? Do we believe it? If we believe it, we do it. He says, do not look at the mirror, as in the book of James. Do not look at the mirror. And then as soon as you see the perfect mirror, you walk away and forget who you are. No, he says, look at the perfect mirror, the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures, and, 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 and apply that to your life everywhere you go. That is faith. How do we show God that we love him? We obey him. I'm not saying you have to do every little thing right now. Shoot, that's just, that's too hard for me too. But what I'm saying is, there is one thing that you can do that God's been asking you to do and you've been doubting a lot. Some of it is to even just come to repentance. Some of it is to be baptized. 
And another is to actually say hi to people or to acknowledge others or to forgive. You don't get stronger or better at something by waiting for it to happen. You get stronger and better at something by going out and doing it every day, such as going to the gym. You, uh, do I go to the gym? First off, no, <laughs> for my own reasons. But if I were to go to the gym and I sit down and I wait there and I go, oh, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour, two hours, however long I'm there. And then I get up and go, well, I didn't feel any different. I don't feel stronger. Now, like, I need to go on a diet and I never actually try to go on a diet and I'm eating all this junk food. And they're like, what? Doesn't make any sense. Of course it doesn't make any sense because you didn't do anything. You didn't actually work out. You didn't actually try to look at um, the stuff that's behind the food and, and tell what's healthy and what's not healthy. You didn't try to do anything. You didn't actually try to read the Bible. You just sat there looking at the Bible, thinking about the Bible. You never actually opened it up. You never actually prayed. And then you wonder why you're not seeing a movement in your life. And that's the way our God is. He's not a God that's just, he's not a genie. Some of us want a genie. We go, we pray and we go, oh, he didn't answer my prayers. I was looking for a job. He didn't answer my prayers so he doesn't exist. You want him to knock on your door, send someone on your door, be like, hey, I got a job for you. He says, seek and you'll find. Seeking actually requires movement. Go to the kitchen, go to the room, open up the Bible and actually read it. Believe it. God says, seek and you'll find. Go into the world and start looking for a job. You will find a job. Go into the world and start looking to help someone. You will find someone that, that's in need that needs your help. And they may not even be money. Maybe just encouragement or comfort. A lot of us, we don't see or experience God because we're not, we don't actually have faith. All we have is knowledge. We have knowledge of what good works is, what God tells us to do. And God says, that's not enough. Only faith pleases me. I want you to gravitate towards this concept. I'm trying to think of a great analogy. Faith is action. And God says, that pleases me. Because I could tell you a thousand times to do something. And you say, I'll do it. I do it. I do it. I did it. But you didn't actually do it. The person who goes to the gym every day, who actually picks up some weights, gets on the treadmill, actually does some workout routine, or they're going to see more progress in their life. And the person who doesn't even go to the gym, who doesn't even do anything in, at the gym, the person who actually reads my word, they're going to see more progress than someone who doesn't even open up the Bible or think about it. The relationship that God is calling us into is, in, is a movement. He says, move. That's what he's saying. He's saying, you need to move. This video is simply done by faith. I look at my old videos. I'm like, one, two views, whatever, man, this crap. But God's like, just keep moving. Just keep going. Don't wait for people to go with you. You go. And if you go long enough, they'll start to follow. Because you're showing the one thing that requires you to be a real Christian is movement. There are a lot of Christians who claim to be Christians, but they don't move. Jesus says, follow me. Jesus stands right here and he starts to walk off. He says, follow me. And I sit here and I'm like, I am following you. And he keeps going and going. I'm, I'm following you. And he gets smaller and smaller. 
till I can't see him no more. You see, the problem is this. As long as you know you're God, you've become God because you need to know where Jesus is going. You need to know why you should do this or what it should look like. That is your image. You've created an image of how people should treat you. You've created an image of how your life should look. You've created an image. You've worshiped that. And God says, until you know that you don't need to know, your life will not only get worse, will only be what you understand. And I will only be what you understand. And therefore, you've become God and you're trying to control me. But those who please me, they simply are like children. They just trust me. They don't need to know. They just trust me. I've shown them enough that they can trust me because they've let go enough and they keep letting go. I wanted to do all these things. I wanted to go to school. I wanted to become a director. I wanted to start up a business. But it started in the small stages of life for me. And I had to let go of each one of those things. I had to keep letting go. And I did. And it was hard. And it sucked at first. But then I realized how big the God that I serve is. And he is bigger than what I could ever understand. And I trust him the more I surrender to him. I had a full pie of all my plans. And I was like, okay, God, you get this slice, you get this slice. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, I got nothing left. And I'm fully in submission almost to him. I don't know because I'm not God, but I'd imagine I'm pretty much there. And I'm like, this is so amazing. My life is so amazing. Life is, I'm just ready to run out the door and see, what, is, what do you got next, God? What, do you, what are you gonna do next? I'm waiting because he's gonna do something amazing. A lot of us, we're living in this mundane life. It's like Groundhog's Day over and over and over again. And there's a party on the outside. And God is doing stuff like, boom, boom, look at this. Look at this love. Look at this amazingness, fellowship, all this awesome stuff. And some of us, we don't even want to take the chance because we're not used to that. We're, we're used to our little box, our little comfort zone, our little small-minded thinking. And God's like, I'm bigger than that. If you trust me, I will show you. Let go and surrender. Let go of your control. Because that is what's holding, holding you back. That is what's hurting you. And God says simply this. Believe. Believe in me. And I will show you eternal life. Beyond your wildest dreams beyond your wildest comprehension. What you're thinking should happen, God is saying, I can do something greater than that if you let go. And I promise you, you won't regret it. You won't even forget it. Thank you for watching. God bless.